Hey, I will say this. One thing that I fuck with y'all, Dolph, and why I respect the young Dolph is because he didn't take that goddamn deal with Yo Gotti. These niggas be having so much motion. They get millions of views on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Getting uh, record label deals and all the type of shit. Like, real motion. But the motherfucker's still in the street and they fuck it up. And as you can see, the true just split into some goddamn... Once uh, J Money got killed, they started having internal shit. So some motherfuckers split off, took a couple niggas with them, and, and started the double R shit. You feel me? They was all one. You know what I'm saying? Then they started... And then he came out with uh, the double R. And then they start beefing. All internal fucking shit. For what? Y'all niggas just can't split off? First of all, you can't even stay together to make the money. Now you can't split off and make the money? Y'all niggas still riding around with AKs and shooting each other and then riding around and got your Dodge Charger and Challenger and, and, and getting killed? For what? Y'all niggas is getting money. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas don't know the play. You know what I'm saying? Like, the play is to get money and stay out the fucking way. Feed your fucking family, get your mom out the hood, whatever, your sister, boom, boom, boom. Nigga, not for you to get killed in the whole... Nigga, if you the head of the motherfucker, once you go down, nigga, that whole ship sink. Poppin' G, gangsta boy, Foosh nigga, man, back with another video. Yo, check me out, man. Hey, I got a, um, I got about 15 DMs to run this video. We about to run up uh, real quick. Uh, Paper Route Empire versus uh, Trulia Mafia. Um, I got a, I got a YouTube short, man, that's going crazy. And about 15 of those people DM me um, to run this video. So if you want to send me a DM, a, a video to react to, make sure you follow this Instagram right here, Fushnika underscore ENT. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen, all my socials. Uh, but we don't get into this video, man. Um, that short's going crazy. And they said this was this is going to kind of give me an idea of <clears throat> what led up to Dolph getting killed or some, some beef that led up to the way shit transpired other than Yo Gotti. So you know I'm interested in that shit because I thought that shit was all... You know what I'm saying? All your Gotti beef and all that type of shit. So for some other shit, True Little Mafia, then I want to get into it. So make sure you tap that like button right now. You ain't got to subscribe to your boy, but man, hit, give me that like button. Run me up, man. Watch the whole video entirely, entirely, entirely fucking through. You feel me? Um, We're going to keep running these videos up, man. I'm going to keep reacting to what you guys want me to react to. And we're going to sprinkle in some shit here and there, you know, do what we got to do. So let's go ahead and get this video started, man, and uh, see what this boy talking about. Young Dolph's death shocked the city of Memphis and the entire rap game, but most people have no idea about the deadly war that led to him getting killed in his hometown. So today we're breaking it all down and taking a look at the crazy beef between Paper Route Empire and the Trula Mafia. Back in the day, Young Dolph's Paper Route crew and Trula Mafia was cool with each other and a Trula member named Jay Money was real tight with Dolph. Jay Money was allegedly one of the most active dudes that Trula had in the streets, but at the same time, he was going hard in the booth and it looked like he could be the next rapper out of Memphis to make it big. Dolph and Jay Money linked up in the studio for a few tracks together, and people close to the situation say that Dolph was his biggest inspiration. Most rappers popping off in Memphis had to link up with another artist or major label to get their clout up in the industry, but Dolph made his own lane and did it all by himself. Going independent was a huge win for Dolph. Hey, I will say this. One thing that I fuck with y'all Dolph and why I respect the young Dolph is because he didn't take that goddamn deal with Yo Gotti. You feel me? I'm built the same way. Like, I believe in myself enough to where I'm going to do my own goddamn thing. I don't want nobody to just throw me some paper and I'll be under their goddamn umbrella and then I, I'm privy to whatever they got to do. You know what I'm saying? As, as, a, as, a, as a business, like, I'll go do that. I want to move how I want to fucking move. So I fuck with Young Dolph saying, you know what? I It's kind of like how Nipsey Hussle, right? Nipsey Hussle didn't get no fucking, he didn't even want no label deal. Until way later to where he could, uh, you know, go by the terms that he fucking wanted. But it's the same thing. Motherfucker, listen, I believe in myself that I'm going to get to where I want to be and I want to be my own goddamn boss. You know what I'm saying? I'm a boss just like you. So I respect the fuck out of uh, Young Dolph for that reason alone. And then I start liking his goddamn music. You feel me? Proof he didn't need anybody's help to get put on. But his success is also what led to him getting brutally murdered. Before we get to that, though, we got to break down what was going on behind the scenes. According to rumors, Jay Money was getting busy in the streets and hmm. <laughs> oh. yeah. really putting pressure on the ops. And he caught a murder charge in 2014 for allegedly killing his own homie. A dude named Denzel Monroe was driving you down the street when Jay hey. Money started letting off shots. Yeah. Monroe okay. hopped out of the whip to let Jay Money know it wasn't some ops rolling up. 
but Jay allegedly kept shooting till Monroe was dead. Jay Money got Damn. hit with first degree murder and five counts of attempted murder, but it's not clear how the situation shook out or why he started shooting in the first place. Jay was on his way up in the rap game, but keeping one. And that's why you keep your old circle really fucking small. You even gotta watch your goddamn homeboys. You feel me? Even you know I'm a loner. You feel me? I got I got homeboy, but it's like I got three that I know for sure. You feel me? And like Young, young Dolph said, his he really a loner. You feel me? Like just because you're around a bunch of niggas and whatever the case, he's really a loner. You kind of gotta be like that. You know what I mean? You got your goddamn homeboy. Jay Money killed his own homeboy and kept shooting him until he knew he was up out of here. That's crazy. He had motion and fucked up his own goddamn shit. For what? Nigga, like he wasn't going to get caught. One foot in the trenches led to him getting killed just a couple years later. On August 20th, 2016, Jay Money was outside of a nightclub called Kitten's Cabaret when a dude named Freddie Yarber shot and killed him. The police said it was a gang-related hit, but it's not clear what set Yarber was repping. He pleaded guilty to second degree murder and being a convicted felon in possession of a handgun. And in 2019, he went down for 15 years over the case. Jay Money's death was a huge blow to the Trula Mafia. He was one of the most feared dudes in the city and was calling all the shots for the crew. Jay was putting on for Trula Mafia in the rap game too and giving them even more clout. After he died, Trula started having all kinds of internal drama, and that's when they split into two different sides and started a war that eventually got Dolph killed. Big Scar came up in the streets repping Trula Mafia. After Jay Money's death, everyone started having static with each other. So Scar left and started his own crew, Rich and Ruthless, aka Double R. He brought some of his homies with him, like Baby K, Kato Two Times, and Tink. And at first, everything was all good between Double R and Trula. But that all changed after someone in Trula murdered a Double R affiliate named BG. All the drama started when BG and a dude from Trula named Simo sparked some kind of beat. At first, it was just between the two of them. But when you both repping sets in a wild city like Memphis, it's only a matter of time before the crews get involved. Simo's older brother, Zamo Trula, is another high ranking member of the Trula Mafia, and they always roll with dudes like Jay Mula, Zay, and go crazy. BG and Simo were dissing back and forth on social media, and Trula allegedly escalated the situation and slid on him. BG was riding around with a double R affiliate named 2 3 when some homies in another car pulled up and started letting off shots. BG was shot and killed, and 2 3 ended up in critical condition. It was rumored Simo, Zay, and go crazy was the ones who took him out. And that was later confirmed when the cops put go crazy and hit him with first degree murder, three attempted murders, assault, and Hey, my problem, bro, <laughs> bro, my problem is with any of this shit, right? Only gang we fucking with if you don't know Foose Niggas, man. Only gang we fucking with is going after new goals. Fuck all that gang shit. That ain't about nothing. You know what I'm saying? You motherfuckers are killing each other for what? For nothing. So my, my question is, and my problem is, Especially in a black community, you feel me? It's like these niggas be having so much motion. They get millions of views on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Getting uh, record label deals and all the type of shit. Like real motion. But the motherfuckers still in the street and they fuck it up. And as you can see, the truly split into some goddamn once uh, J Money got killed, they start having internal shit. So some motherfuckers split off, took a couple niggas with them, and, and started the double R shit. You feel me? They was all one. You know what I'm saying? Then they started, and then he came out with uh, the double R. And then they start beefing. All internal fucking shit. For what? Y'all niggas just can't split off? First of all, you can't even stay together and make the money. Now you can't split off and make the money? Y'all niggas still riding around with AKs and shooting each other and then riding around and got your Dodge Charger and Challenger and, and, and getting killed? For what? Y'all niggas just getting money. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas don't know the play. You know what I'm saying? Like, the play is to get money and stay out the fucking way. Feed your fucking family, get your mom out the hood, whatever, your sister, boom, boom, boom. Nigga, not for you to get killed in the whole... Nigga, if you the head of the motherfucker, once you go down, nigga, that whole ship sink. The niggas that's on top don't know how to stay on top. Nigga, they the nigga that's causing the whole fucking downfall. In use of a firearm commissioned of a dangerous felony, Crazy confessed to the shooting and took the fall for everything, but that was only the beginning. While Go Crazy was dealing with the BG murder situation, c -Mode was in juvie for a different case, and while he was behind bars, Double R allegedly clapped back and took out one of his closest homies. Zay and c -Mode came up together and allegedly slid on BG, and while c -Mode was locked up, Zay was shot and killed. It didn't take long for Trula to get revenge though. Two, three survived getting shot the night he got caught in the whip with BG, but he wasn't so lucky the next time the ops found him. They pulled up to his crib and started letting off shots into the apartment, and 2-3 and his dad both got hit. 
Unfortunately, this time, he ain't pulled through and was pronounced dead. After Simo came back Nigga, home, he jumped right back in the trenches and allegedly slid on Double R again. In January 2020, Simo, Jay Mula, and a dude named CEO Bobby all got booked after they got into a shootout in the middle of the day. The cops responded to the shooting and the Trula guys tried to speed up, but after running a few red lights, they crashed their whip and the police caught up to them. So, so you can see that the, it's going through the machine and then right here they're putting the label on it. C-Mode already had a bunch of charges against him, but after he bonded out, he hopped in the booth and started putting pressure on Double R in the rap game too. He dropped a track called Send a Hit and got a lot of buzz in this. Nigga, what is the point? Nigga, what is the point of going to slide on the motherfucking ops and then jumping in a fucking booth to make some money that you ain't gonna motherfucking see any goddamn way? Niggas is weird, nigga. City, but Double R was clapping back in the booth as well. J Money's brother D Money was shot and killed on Trick Street in Memphis. And CEO Jizzle from Double R dissed him on the track Rich and Ruthless and raps, If you diss on 2 3, swear to God it's gonna be RIP. You ain't hear what happened to the last dude, got left on Trig Street. Baby K was the first Double R rapper to get some buzz, but he convinced Big Scar to hop in the studio and he blew up instantly. Scar was racking up crazy numbers from the jump, and it ain't take long for Gucci Mane to reach out and sign on the 1017. Scar had connections in the industry because his cousin Pooh Shiesty was already signed to Gucci. And they started putting on from oh, Memphis together like crazy. Shiesty, right? Making it in the rap game don't mean you safe from the streets, though. At in all. 2020, the ops caught Big Scar and almost killed him. He took a gunshot to the hip, but the bullet wound went up his spine and into one of his lungs. Scar barely survived the shooting, but he showed the ops that it wasn't going to slow him down, and he hopped right back in the booth. Big Scar was also tight with Young Dolph and said he was a huge inspiration. Dolph was in a tough spot, though, because of what was going down between Double R and Trula Mafia. Back in the day, he was cool with a lot of dudes on the Trula side, but he also had homies in Double R and even signed a rapper from the crew named Big Ump. Rap fans who don't keep up with Memphis street politics ain't think it was a big deal, but in the city, it was huge news. Dolph and Jay Money was super close before Jay's murder. His death caused a lot of drama between everyone in Trula Mafia, but rumors say what really caused the split was when Big Scar hooked up with D-Money's girl. After Double R and Trula went to war, D-Money was allegedly killed by Big Ump. And that's why so many people were shocked that Dolph signed him to his label, Paper Route Empire. Dolph had been pretty neutral during the whole beef, but signing Big Unk turned him into one of Trula's biggest ops immediately, and it's what allegedly got him killed. Dolph came up in the streets and knew how hard it was to make it out of Memphis. What made him different, though, is how he did everything on his own. He could have signed with Yo Gotti back in the day and made everything easier for himself, but instead he invested his own money into the rap game and started taking over. By 2020, Dolph was already a living legend in Memphis, but at the same time, his old homies was in the middle of a deadly war. Jay Mula came home from jail after serving time from the shooting when he got locked up with CMO to CEO Bobby. Rumors was flying that a dude from Double R named Keto two times robbed him and took his gun after he got back. But Mula said it was all cap and that he had used the gun to shoot up Double R and then gave it to one of his little homies. At the same time, his homie Simo was still applying pressure on Double R. They allegedly shot him twice, but Simo survived and went right back to sliding on ops. The cops finally booked him after a bunch of shootings, and they even connected him to BG's murder from back in the day. Simo was one of Trula's top shooters, and he allegedly even shot up the same house twice in the same week. He slid into Double R territory and started letting off shots at some dudes inside the crib but missed everyone. So a few days later, Simo came right back and shot at two people who were standing outside at the same spot. Simo getting locked up was a massive blow for Trula Mafia, but another dude in the set named CEO TZ held it down for the crew. And this is how it all allegedly led to young Dolph's tragic death. TZ wasn't just Dolph's op because of the issues with Trula Mafia. He also had ties to Yo Gotti and was spotted kicking it with Gotti's brother. Gotti and Dolph had major issues ever since Dolph decided to go independent okay. instead of signing with him. So now, I, now, now it's making sense to me. Now it's making sense because I know who's uh, CEO TZ was uh, was friends with uh, Big uh, Big Jux. You know, they got pictures together and, you know, so that wraps him up in the whole Yo Gotti thing. So now it's making sense to me. I'm like, bro, what the, I thought this shit had to do with, yada, yada. but now that shit led over into CEO TZ, which knew Big Jux, Yo Gotti and so forth. Okay, now I got it. I got it now back in the day. When Dolph turned him down, Gotti signed Black Youngster instead and allegedly tried to take Dolph out twice. The first time happened after Dolph dropped a wild diss track called Play With Your Bitch and rapped, that track Don't play with me, ho crazy. Gotti, you a hoe, man. You went from my biggest fan to my biggest hater, begging me to sign with you, but I had too much paper. Still that same nigga that used to front your big brother. 
found out he a bitch too. Now I call him your big sister. And they said them pussy niggas on your team are in your draws. They say you make the pussy ass <laughs> niggas call what? you boss, but they can't call you king because that's dog. One day Ooh, after Dolph dropped the video for the king? track, someone slid on him in they North Carolina. They can't call you king because that's Dolph. Hey, listen. There's a lot of people on that on that YouTube short I got a Dolph saying that um, Yo Gotti ain't never speak bad on, uh, on, on Young Dolph. Which, you know, might be true. But understand this. Yo Gotti ain't no fucking dummy. You feel me? This motherfucker is making moves and was doing shit with uh, Jay-Z. How the fuck would he look going out there promoting... And saying some dumb shit when he got motherfucking billionaires and going over to billionaires' houses. Yo Gotti is not dumb. Yo Gotti is about his fucking money. He might have felt how he felt, which is why you have motherfuckers like Yo Gotti come for. I mean, uh, Black Youngster come forward, do a ho do a diss track, say goddamn Young Dolph ain't even from the city. He's from Chicago or some shit like that. And then you have fucking Big Juke come out, but it was never Yo Gotti. But best believe them niggas felt the way they felt. Because Yo Gotti felt the way he felt, but Yo Gotti he wasn't dumb enough to come out in the media and say, all every everything you heard Yo Gotti say was me and Holmes ain't never had no beef. That's all you heard Yo Gotti say. Nigga ain't stupid, bro. China and let off over a hundred shots into his SUV. Black youngster was charged for the shooting, but the cops ended up dropping the case against him because they ain't have enough evidence. Then a few months later, uh, Dolph uh, allegedly hunted Gotti down in L.A. to confront him over everything. It's not clear exactly how the situation popped off. But Dolph ended up getting shot three times. Dolph pulled through and made a full recovery. And after that, the beef with Gotti died down. But after Dolph was shot and killed in 2021, everyone immediately thought Gotti and CMG were involved with the situation. Dolph's issue with Gotti wasn't the only drama he was dealing with in Memphis, though. And the war between Double R and Trula Mafia is allegedly what really got him killed. Dolph was at his favorite bakery buying cookies when two shooters hopped out of a stolen Benz and started letting off shots. The first dude the cops suspected for Dolph's death was a rapper named Straight Drop. They grabbed him. Hey, somebody drop it in the comment section, man, because they saying Young Dolph uh, got killed buying the cookies, right? And they keep showing that old footage of him, you know, opening his uh, his uh, his uh, pickup truck door, you know what I'm saying, on camera and eating cookies and shit like that. But a lot of motherfuckers saying he wasn't there um, to buy cookies. A lot, and then you get, you know, you got a lot of people saying he was there to buy cookies. That's why he got killed. And then you got a lot of people saying he was there putting a down payment on, to, uh, down payment down to use the goddamn parking lot for a turkey drive. So Memphis tap in. Which one? Which one? Which one was it? Was he there getting uh, Makita's cookies for his mom, or was he there putting down a down payment to use the goddamn parking lot for his his turkey drive? You feel me? Another dude named Cornelia Smith at first, then Straight Drop got caught trying to run in Indiana the same day. A few months later, they arrested a dude named Hernandez Govan and claimed he's the one who ordered the hit. But it turns out there might be more to the story. Joshua Taylor, aka CEO TZ from Trula Mafia, was named as a person of interest in the case. He never got booked for Dolph's murder, but rumors say he helped plan the whole thing. A dude named Jamarcus Johnson was also arrested for. Helping the shooters escape after Dolph's death, and he ended up pleading guilty and agreed to testify against everyone else in the case, so his murder charge would get dropped. Uh, a good chance, damn. Johnson would have gotten TZ jammed up in the case too when he took the stand, but the ops caught up to TZ before the police had the chance. Back in June, TZ was found dead in his whip from gunshot. You're not getting out of here that Nobody's easy, sir. Look for his murder, you know what I'm saying? There are a couple rumors going around about what happened. One version says that Dolph's homies from Paper Route Empire or Double R killed TZ for revenge. TZ was already Double R's op, so they had a reason to take him out. But if they knew he was involved with Dolph's murder, it would definitely put a bigger target on his back. There's also a wild rumor that says TZ got backdoored by his own people. There's no evidence to back any of this up yet, but here's a theory flying around right now. Yo Gotti wanted Dolph out of the picture and allegedly put a bag on his head. TZ and other Trula affiliates were already cool with Gotti, so they went to collect the money and get in tighter with his crew. The hit went down like it was supposed to, but the shooters were sloppy and ended up getting caught. Even though TZ was never charged, a lot of people think he was involved somehow, and if he got wrapped up in the case, he could have told the police everything he knew and skated on his own charges. That's why some people think Gotti wanted TZ gone too. If Gotti really was involved and was in contact with TZ about the hit, it could have got him sent away for life if TZ decided to flip. This is all just a rumor though, and right now there's no evidence even linking Gotti to Dolph's death. People want to tie Gotti into the situation because he's a big name and it would make the whole story even crazier. 
But in reality, it probably all happened because of the Trula Mafia and Double R War. Dolph wanted to help other dudes from the streets of Memphis make it out and change their lives. But when you sign an artist who are in the middle of a gang war, you just gonna end up putting a target on your own back. The trial for Dolph's murder probably won't start till next year. But when Jamarcus Johnson testifies against his homies, we'll find out way more about what's going on Ooh, behind the scenes. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. You know Hopefully we gotta tap in with that. Him, though, for sure. Otherwise, he might end up like CEO TZ. Right. Double R and Trula Mafia turned Memphis into a war zone and lost a ton of people on both sides. Big Scar survived it all and looked like he was really gonna blow up in the industry. But then last year, he was tragically pronounced dead after an accidental overdose. Like an overdose the beef bro. pulled off because so many dudes ended up either dead or in prison though. And hopefully it stays that way because Memphis has already lost way too many people to the streets. Rest in peace to everyone who lost their lives. Man, that's crazy, bro. Like, so a lot of that shit I even know about. True Your Mafia and Double R and them knowing uh, Dolph and then him getting in the middle of the fucking shit. I'm thinking it's all one way. I'm thinking it's all CMG. And that's the reason. Bro, this story crazy. It's going to get store uh, crazier when uh, the motherfucking trial start. You feel me? Then some shit come out. But, you know, I, it's crazy. I wonder who the feds got, goddamn. I know they got their radar on a lot of motherfuckers. But I wonder who's going down that fed time. Other than that, man, these 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 young niggas and Double R and True Your Mafia, is, nigga, you can't be no, bro, you can't be no more dumber. Nigga, if y'all didn't want to get to the goddamn money, then y'all just go do what y'all do without getting on the goddamn, in the rap game or putting out records or labels and, and YouTube music videos. What the fuck is the point? So then, you, so you get more recognized and motherfuckers, if motherfuckers didn't really recognize you in the street and say, oh, yes, the nigga that did that, boom, boom, that's him. What's the fucking point? If you're not about getting to the bread and getting out the fucking way, man, bro, it'd be, we'd be our own downfall, period. We just do. You don't hear about all these other motherfuckers getting bread and fucking killing. You don't hear none of that. It's all us. That shit's sad, bro. But, okay, so now I got I got my backstory, so now I get to keep up really on what's going on and what's going to happen, how, how uh, Yo Gotti's going to move forward with how, how he's going to, Move, you know what I'm saying, after his brother got killed, how his shit's going to move with Angela Simmons if she's going to, you know what I'm saying, he's going to put her in her back and, you know what I mean, like, bro, it's crazy how this shit going to uh, play out, but I can't wait to see it, man, but, hey, make sure you follow me on um, social media, uh, drop me a DM if you want me to react to a video that you know about that I don't know about pertaining to anything that's relevant or shit, some shit that's just going down, you feel me? Um, other than that, man, like the video, give me that motherfucker thumbs up, you feel me, it's your boy Fushing, man, you know, only gang we tapping in is going after new goals, man, fuck all that other shit, man, the other shit gonna take you down, they ain't gonna help you get your family no motherfucking where, your family still gonna be in, a, in, in the motherfucking trenches while you dead in the, the dirt, nigga, so what's really the fucking point, nigga, I'm about mine, nigga, you gotta really come fuck with me to, to do something stupid, I ain't going looking for nothing, and what that nigga 50 say, say, nigga, don't go looking for nothing. Don't go get in nothing. You see how rich that nigga is. You see how he said the way he nigga talk this shit on Instagram and keep it moving. Nigga, I'm trying to get down to what I'm on. I'm that type of time, nigga. All this other shit, nigga, because anybody can get killed. Anybody can end up in the dirt. So I don't give a fuck. You're not the baddest motherfucker in the motherfucking world. If somebody better than your ass, believe that. If somebody crazier than your ass, believe that. Some more, somebody more psycho than your ass, believe that. There's somebody out there that don't got shit to lose that'll risk it all. You feel me? So fuck all that, man. Go get your goddamn money, man. Take care of your family. Stay out the motherfucking way. You ain't got to prove shit to no fucking body, bro. You came in this motherfucking world alone, you're going to go out alone. Fuck all that. It's your boy Fushigan, man. We out this bitch. Gone.